Non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. These slides are made for Anatomy 10A Lab at Mount San Antonio College. Now in your handout for first practicum, we only listed as stratified squamous epithelium. However, you should know that there are two types, non-keratinized and keratinized, so I will cover each separately. Just a quick review, we have four main tissue types in the body, epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle tissues, and nervous tissue. We're going to talk about epithelial tissues right now. Uh, epithelia, by definition, must be on the surface and it's going to be lining something. And the cells are going to be very close together so there are no space in between. There would be no blood vessels in epithelial tissues. Oftentimes, we name them by the number of layers and the shape of the cells. For example, if the cell only forms one layer on the surface, then it's simple epithelium. If the cells form more than one layer, then we call that stratified epithelium. In this case, we're definitely talking about more than one layer because it's stratified squamous. Now, the squamous part talks about the shape of the cell. If the cells look squished, SQ for squish, SQ for squamous, then it's stratified squamous, and that's what we're talking about. We're not going to worry about the other two, but just know that uh, there is such a thing as cuboidal cells and columnar cells. So, stratified squamous. Stratified means many layers. If you look at this, sure enough, these dots are nuclei, and if you count, oh gosh, there are going to be like dozens of layers here. Squamous meaning they're squished. These cells are squished. They're flat cells. And once again, you know, location, this would be in the epidermis, which is the skin. And if with our skin, we have two kinds. We have non-keratinized and keratinized skin. So here's a comparison. On this side, we have keratinized. All of these things here are dead squamous cell. How do I know they're dead? Because there are no nuclei left at all. At this region, these are stratified squamous epithelium. They still have uh, nuclei, so these are living cells. On this side, all of these are stratified squamous epithelium, but it doesn't have the keratin on the top surface like the other side. There is the distinction in terms of location. When you see the keratin, then you know it's dry skin. The thicker the keratin, the more wear and tear in that position. So this thick keratin, for example, is probably going to be on the sole of the feet. Another uh, location where there's a, a fairly thick keratin would be the palms of the hand. And then other dry skin area would not be as thick of a keratin. But now we're going to focus on the non-keratinized part, okay? Non-keratinized would be opposite of the keratinized, of course. So it will be located in areas that are moist. So for example, the vagina, the mouth, the anus, okay? Um, all of that would be more of a moist area, so it would be non-keratinized, stratified squamous epithelium. So here's the picture. And then you see a lot of nuclei, and notice a lot of dark on the bottom here, the base of the membrane, because here we have healthy living cells that are dividing. As they mature, they're going to grow toward the top, they're going to be pushed toward the top, if you will, and as they push toward the top, they start to die. And when they die, the nucleus starts to disappear. So what gives it away that this is stratified squamous is, first of all, multiple layers of cells. The cells look squished because they are squamous cells. And there is definitely a concentration of healthy round nuclei toward the bottom of the epithelium. As you get to the top, it starts to disappear. This is how you distinguish stratified squamous from transitional epithelium. Remember. With transitional epithelium in the bladder, there tend to be healthy round nuclei throughout the tissue. Here's a look of stratified squamous, okay, non-keratinized, so this is the esophagus. Notice there's lots of healthy nuclei down here, and as you go to the top, it starts to disappear, okay. Stratified squamous epithelium. Here's another look. 
Lots of healthy nuclei down here, but as you move toward the top, the cells tend to look more flattened and the nucleus start to disappear, so stratified squamous epithelium. This is stratified squamous epithelium in the tongue. Okay, this is from the tongue. Once again, lots of dark down here, that would be lots of nuclei. Less nuclei here as you move toward the top. Another look, stratified squamous epithelium. Notice all of these are non-keratinized. Lots of healthy round nucleus as you get to the top. Same thing here, stratified squamous epithelium. Loss of healthy round nucleus as you get to the top. Once again, loss of healthy nucleus on the bottom. Not so as you get to the top. In fact, you start to get really squished, you know, squamous epithelium. Non-keratinized, stratified squamous epithelium here. Just another look. Non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. Notice healthy, more healthy nuclei on the bottom, not so on top. Um, stratified squamous epithelium. Another look of stratified squamous epithelium. Notice a lot more nucleus on the bottom, a lot more nuclei on the bottom, not so many nuclei on top. All of this is stratified squamous epithelium. Lots of healthy nuclei down here, not so on the top. Another view of stratified squamous epithelium. And that's it.